Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another episode in my honestly biased opinions on a new makeup releases series. And today I am wearing a wig. You'll have to tell me if this looks completely strange and stupid on camera. I have not like glued this down properly. I need to learn how to wear wigs. I think it looks mostly okay besides like this bit up here. I don't know what to do with that. If I sit like this, <laughs> you can't really tell, right? <laughs> Anyway, hopefully I don't look too crazy in this video. <laughs> Let's get started talking about some new makeup releases. So first up we have Natasha Denona's Valentine's Day collection. This is like a mini version of the Love collection she released. I'm guessing that was last Valentine's Day. Holy crap, time has really flown because I feel like that was not that long ago, but really that was probably released last Valentine's Day. Holy crap. So you've got the mini love palette, which is one of her five pan palettes. I think this one actually looks really pretty. It's not something I would be bothered enough to buy, but I do actually like the color story. I like that there's one really light shimmer. There's a really deep matte. Like, thank God there's a really deep matte in this because so many like smaller palettes I've seen released lately don't have any deeper mattes in them. So I'm glad there's at least a transition shade and a deeper matte in there. There's a lighter shimmer and two kind of mid-tone looking shimmers. I think that looks really pretty, but it's not enough for me to want to buy it. And then she's got a face duo that has a cream blush in it and a highlighter powder. The front of the packaging is the same as the bigger version of her Love palette. I think it's cute, but it's also kind of childish. And although I think the description of the highlighter sounds absolutely beautiful because it says it's a warm pinkish chrome that shifts from pink to champagne. So it's a duochrome. It sounds beautiful. It does look beautiful. I also think the print on that highlighter pan is childish and it kind of looks a bit tacky. I think there's a fine line between embossing in a pan looking really cool and pretty or looking tacky and childish. I think with just all the clutter love hearts combined with the front of the duo it looks a bit more childish than cool I don't know <laughs> and the tone of the blush isn't my favorite kind of pink I'm not into that I'm not into cream blushes so that's not for me but that highlighter I wouldn't mind trying that it does look beautiful I see BF buying this to be honest but the one thing I'm really interested in in this collection is the I need a nude lipstick shade in the shade 36 NP Amorosa because I absolutely love the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude lipsticks. I love them. I love the formula. I love the tones. But a lot of the time, the limited edition shades she releases are just too pale for me. So <laughs> I can't get them. But this shade looks like it might not be too light for me. I know Angelica Nyquist will be doing a video on this collection. I'm waiting to see her video because I can usually tell from how a lipstick looks on her whether it will be too light or too dark for me. If it ends up being that I could probably get away with wearing it, I might pick this one up. The packaging also looks beautiful in that chromey pink. I love these lipsticks. I don't like paying full price for them, so we'll see, but I am... I am interested in that lipstick. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> now for something else pink to go with today's theme. Hey, I wasn't even trying to be Valentine's-y. I literally wasn't. I'm so Valentine's-y today. Oh my God, that's so cohesive. I didn't even mean it. I literally just wanted to use the pinks from the Nikki Tutorials Beauty Bay palette because that's what you guys voted on my Instagram for me to use next from that palette, that color combo. So I just went full pink today and I feel very Valentine's-y now and it actually matches with the theme of this episode which is actually a lot of Valentine's-y stuff. I was so unintentionally cohesive. That's awesome. <laughs> Anyway, the next thing is from Dragon Beauty. So she's come out with three shades of lip gloss, I don't give a shit, and a little eyeshadow palette to celebrate her birthday. And <laughs> I was like, holy shit, she's 21. She's only turning 21. But <laughs> I feel so old. <laughs> I did think she was a little bit older than that, but maybe that's just because I did start watching her YouTube channel so many years ago. So she must have been a teenager back then. Like, I always thought she was around my age, but she's way younger than me. <laughs> Oh god, that just makes me feel so old. The little five pan palette is called The Fantasy Volume 3. I'm sorry, but when is she going to stop using The Fantasy for like everything. <laughs> I don't know. I just find it boring. 
can we move on from the fantasy? Like I get it, I get it's her shtick, but it's kind of it's kind of dull at this point in my opinion. One of the comments I saw about this palette that made me laugh was them saying that the palette looks like squashed flat beauty blenders because they're in that little egg shape and they do look like flat beauty blenders. <laughs> this color story is not for me. It looks like there's two mattes, which is a very light pastel pink matte and a black matte. The fuck am I doing with that? And then you've got three shimmers. The color story is not that great in my opinion. It's not really something I would be interested in, but I will say I am relieved that with this packaging, she just made it like a cute anime picture. That cover art is not really my style either, but I find it immensely preferable to her previous anime hentai kind of visual she was doing with those really creepy 3D animated videos. Those weren't doing it for me. I very much prefer this over her usual kind of over-sexualized concepts. Really prefer that, not into this collection though. I also just wanted to mention that she did release translucent powders not too long ago and a setting spray. I don't really care, I didn't care about it then either, but I did just see the promotional photo for it the other day and it did make me like smirk a bit because oh my god. So much of her promotional stuff just looks so tacky to me and <laughs> I don't know, the thing with like holding the three translucent powders, how she's holding it in that photo, it makes me think of, you know, the movie Total Recall, the original one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, that scene in that, I think it's a bar or something and it has that alien with the three titties. That's what this photo makes me think of. <laughs> so I just find it a little tacky. It's just, I don't know, so much of her promotional stuff I just find a bit cringe and... I don't know, I guess that's kind of her style, like over the top, a bit tacky, very over-sexualized, I get it. That's definitely her aesthetics, it's just not my aesthetics and that's fine, but it's just not for me, okay? <laughs> so the brand called Makeup A Murder came out with a new palette called Burnaphone. I hate this. <laughs> I meant to be sugarcoating things more because everyone's so, oh my god, I don't want to offend anyone in these videos. I was meant to try and sugarcoat things a bit more, but it's just, it's just not me, okay? It's just not me. I have to admit with this brand, I've never really looked into this brand much before because overall I just don't like the idea of makeup a murder as a concept. I watch a lot of true crime content and, you know... <laughs> True crime and murder is not really a joking, fun, colourful thing to me. It's a very serious, sad thing and I just, I know it doesn't bother most people, the concept of this brand, but I just think it's such a tacky concept to go with makeup and murder. Like, what is it even... Like, what is even the point of it? Like, it doesn't even make sense to me. It's not even a cool theme. I'm getting the impression from the fact that they've done a burner phone palette that they just wanted to go with crime themed things. I just think they could have come up with a better name for the brand if they really wanted to focus on crime related stuff. I guess burner phone isn't offensive, but it's also not particularly murder related either. And the palette itself is such a kind of childish looking thing for a brand whose namesake is quite a serious topic. I don't know, there's a bit of dissonance there that I find a bit confusing between the product and their name. This palette, I don't know, <laughs> I don't like it at all. The color story itself is, you know, a kind of jumbled basic rainbow palette. The packaging looks very tacky. It's not that different from Glamlight. I'm not always into Glamlight's palettes. I think sometimes they border too much on, on the tacky side as well with their packaging, but I think this is kind of similar in that way. The names of the shades are like, on my way, talk to you later, got to go, shut the F up. How is this burner phone related? Kind of think this palette looks a little bit like a hot mess. It kind of looks like kids makeup to me and I find it a bit tacky. I don't like the brand's concept as a whole. So this one is not for me. So Huda Beauty has reformulated her, her faux filter matte foundation. They are now calling it a luminous matte foundation and the changes to the original formula is that apparently it is now 24 hour flexible wear whatever that means a luminous matte finish and it's fragrance free and the only reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm so glad she's decided to remove the heavy fragrance from it because a lot of her products have that really heavy perfumey 
fragrance. I'm not into it. I have a very sensitive sense of smell. I have bad eyesight, bad hearing, but I have excellent sense of smell. I don't like a lot of strongly smelling things these days. It's a pet peeve of mine. I know it's stupid, but it does affect my enjoyment of some products. If I don't like the smell of the product and it's too strong, I really don't like it. Because I knew this foundation had such a strong smell from reviews, I was never going to try it. But now that she has removed the fragrance, I may try it one day because I do like matte foundations, especially because apparently this new luminous matte formula is meant to have a bit more of a satin matte finish, not the fully cake matte finish. So I'm a bit more interested in this foundation now that she has fixed it up a little bit. <laughs> I think that was a really smart decision on her end to do that. Okay, now for the really controversial product in the indie beauty scene at the moment, at least on Instagram. I saw a lot of people being angry about this. People had a lot of feelings about this. This is the new palette by Killer Queens Cosmetics. I had never heard of them before, but they are a small indie brand, but they have released a new Valentine's palette. It is called the Anti-Valentine's palette. It has a hand etched, um, <laughs> middle finger on the middle of the mirror. Looking at the comments and feedback people have given on that, a lot of people don't like that on the mirror. They think it's a bit distasteful. But the main reason I mention that is because that also comes into the costing element of this release, which is what people are angry about. This palette is 120 US dollars. When I first saw that, I was like, holy shit. And then I thought, that's US dollars. I have to think about that in Australian dollars plus shipping. That is the equivalent of 160 Australian dollars. So that is a significant amount of money. So this palette is very expensive and people's knee jerk reaction was very, <laughs> very angry and maybe some of you will be surprised but I'm not as angry as some people are about this because I don't actually think the brand technically did anything wrong. I think the issue here is more that the brand maybe didn't understand how consumers would react to such a price tag and you can tell that by a lot of their responses they gave to people being frustrated about the price. First up, they were comparing themselves to well-established brands like Cleona and saying, they charge this much for multi-chromes. Why can't we charge that much? We have nine multi-chromes in this palette. This is why our palette is so expensive. I also should have mentioned this palette has nine multi-chromes, two duochromes and one matte. So the main portion of the cost in that would be the multi-chromes. So they compared themselves to Cleona, which made a lot of people angry because Cleona probably has the best reputation possible in terms of multi-chromes. They are so well-established, well-respected. Everyone knows you can go to them for very high quality multi-chromes. So that's one point of difference between Cleona's pricing and this brand's pricing. The other aspect is Cleona and all the other indie brands they mentioned that they were comparing their multi-chrome prices to. The fact is when I looked into this brand from everything I gathered reading their comments, reading the owner's comments on their Instagram page, looking at their website, etc. These multi-chromes are not handmade by this brand. These multi-chromes are actually manufactured in China. Now, before a bunch of you get angry, I am not shitting on cosmetics made in China. I will actually even put a screenshot up of a visual of my makeup inventory that shows you that the country of origin of the highest number of products in my collection is actually from China. One of my very favorite brands, Kaleidos Makeup, is designed and manufactured in China. So now that we've got that out of the way, because I saw in the comments that was the first thing people were going for. When people mentioned this point of view, that they immediately went on the attack saying, stop putting down makeup manufactured in China. That is not what I'm saying by mentioning this. Point is, brands like Cleona have a high price tag for their multi-chromes. One, because multi-chromes are more expensive in general, but the bigger component is that they are handmade products, which means it's a lot more manual labor. They have to actually pay their staff or if they're one person by themselves running their business, that is so many hours of work. Now you compare that to this brand that is saying my multi-chromes are worth just the same as Cleona's. Well, the difference is this brand, none of these shades in this palette seem to be handmade. They are all manufactured in China. You can get the same things manufactured in China for a much lower cost than you would someone having to hand make that product 
in a Western country. Now, I did get the impression that this brand isn't all private labeled. It sounds like this palette at least isn't private labeled. It sounds like they've worked with a lab to get the formula for this palette and the lab is producing the eyeshadows. So after all my rambling, what I'm trying to say is the fact that they're manufactured in China is not a problem. They can still be good quality, etc. The problem is more that they are comparing the price of something manufactured in China compared to the price of something that is handmade one by one in a Western country. It seemed like that's what the owner and some of the people in the comments were kind of missing there, that that is why a lot of people were mad because you're comparing something that takes a lot more time and effort, the cost of making that to something that was just manufactured at a cheaper rate in China. You can't be surprised when people are going to assume that their multi-chromes would cost a lot less than Cleona's multi-chromes would cost. And if you're a consumer looking at both options and you're thinking, I'm going to have to pay a premium for either multi-chrome, I'm going to go for the one from Cleona that's handmade, has a really good brand reputation. Killer Queen's cosmetics brand does not have a strong brand reputation, so it's a bit harder for them to ask for this exorbitant price when they don't have the history backing up that price. Now in saying that, do I think they were wrong or bad in pricing their palette like this? No, I actually don't. It was still their choice to do this. I think their problem was more in misunderstanding how consumers would view this pricing structure, especially in comparison to other indie brand multi-chromes on the market that are handmade and come with a reputation, etc. I looked at a comparison that is relevant in Australia, and that is the brand Glaminatrix Cosmetics. They sell their individual multi-chromes for about $16 AU per multi-chrome. If you were to do a bundle of nine of their multi Chromes, that would be 144 Australian dollars and you compare that to this brand that is, is selling this palette that has nine multi-chromes and the price is 158 Australian dollars. So when you look at it like that the pricing structure isn't too horrible besides the facts I mentioned before about one being manufactured in China and the other being handmade with love in a western country. So that's the difference there. I really think if you want to release a multi-chrome palette I think you should really scale that down to something that people are going to reasonably be able to look at and not be like oh my god <laughs> because it's not beneficial for the brand either because they are instantly limiting their consumer base a crap ton straight off the bat even if they like the color story even if they like you as a brand you put that huge price tag up first up you are immediately cutting out a bunch of your consumer audience just based on that because it's too high for a lot of us i think only your major fans would be willing to invest that much money into something like that straight off the bat. I really think if you want to release a multi-chrome palette, I think you'd be much better off going for a quad or a six pan, which would still be expensive, but it wouldn't be hitting that $150, $160 price tag. The brand had a bit of awkwardness in how they were responding to people on this because I know they would have been personally very hurt by everyone being so mad about the price. They probably didn't anticipate that. It sucks. I see why they would be upset, but they also didn't handle it that great either. Some of their comments did make me cringe a little bit because one of their justifications for the price being so high was that every palette takes them 15 minutes to assemble and I was like I'm sorry am I meant to like pat you on the back or something. I'm sorry, but that was a really bad justification to put in there for as part of why the pricing was so big. Like you only having to spend 15 minutes to assemble a palette compared to any brands having to hand mix, hand press, hand glue, hand everything, every single shadow in that palette compared to you having to spend 15 minutes to assemble a palette. Now, obviously a lot of that price coming into that would also have been them going through formulations, etc., and paying for their lab, etc. But still, that was just a, I think that was a really bad choice to put that 15 minute thing in because I saw that and I immediately went, oh my God. Like the rest of us out here are working, you know, eight to 10 hour days to make the money that this palette costs. If even that, putting a 15 minute marker in there to just help justify the price just comes off as in really bad taste. I don't think it was a good way to get people on your side. They also said the hand etching of the mirror is part of the cost and that also rubbed a lot of people the wrong way because a lot of people are like, I don't want that etching on the hand mirror. It's tacky and distasteful. I do kind of feel a little bit sorry for this brand because everyone went so hardcore against them, but I don't think they technically did anything 
anything wrong. I think the issue was really with misjudging the market and how people would respond to it. I don't actually think the brand is evil for releasing that palette at that price. Now I'll just quickly talk about the palette itself. I actually do think it is a pretty palette. It's not something I'm particularly interested in buying, but it's a cute color story. It kind of reminds me of the Copacetic Cosmetics Companion Palette. It really reminds me of that palette. I'll put that up on the screen so you can compare them yourselves. The price is just too much. I wouldn't purchase this one. I feel a bit sorry for this brand. I do kind of think they just misjudged how people would react to this kind of pricing structure. <laughs> Oh gosh, it's terrible. The last thing we are going to talk about is from Glam Glow. This is a limited collection that is a collab with Marilyn Monroe. Ugh. I'm not annoyed, you're annoyed. <laughs> For some perspective, I love Marilyn Monroe. I've loved Marilyn Monroe for many years now. I've watched most of her movies and have read a lot of books on her. She's a celebrity that I really relate to and I made a strong like emotional connection to when I was learning about her, you know, what her life was like and what happened to her, etc. So when I see stuff like this, it kind of just gives me the shits. I don't know, I feel like with collabs overall that are with people who have passed away, like isn't the concept of that by itself tacky? Because that person has passed away, they cannot give their opinion or approval on any of this crap. And this crap is being sold in their name without their approval for money. I'm not sure who owns the rights to Marilyn Monroe's estate, but they are the ones making money of this because they have to provide approvals for brands to use their image, etc. So someone is making money from this and I don't know, I find it kind of sad. Like, you know, she went through all this shit in her life, wanting people to love her and care for her for who she was and not take advantage of her. And then even in death, whoever owns her estate is still taking advantage of her image and her life to make money for themselves in a tacky way. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it offends my soul. <laughs> Especially because the products they're releasing are not even new products. Like they've got the Gravity Mud mask and the Super Mud mask, which I'm pretty sure are both existing masks in Glam Glow's catalogs. They've literally just put her face on the packaging and made them gold and said Marilyn Monroe approved even though she didn't use masks like this. I don't know if she did, but I feel like she didn't. I don't think charcoal mud masks were a thing back then. <laughs> Could they at least release something relevant to her actual beauty routine or like a bright red lipstick or something? I just think this collection is tacky. I'm not into it. Anyway, that is the last product I'm going to talk about this week. Let me know if you are a Marilyn Monroe fan, what is your favorite movie that she was in? For me, it just, it has to be Gentlemen Prefer Blondes because you know, it is the quintessential Marilyn Monroe classic. She looks like absolute perfection in that movie. I just love her chemistry in that movie with the other lead actress. It's Jane something, I can't remember her name. Ah, oh, crap, I haven't watched that in a long time. I need to rewatch that. But I also really like Let's Make Love. Even though that movie doesn't seem to be as popular with Marilyn Monroe fans, I find The Misfit really depressing in terms of her, you know, relationship with Arthur Miller. Like how he thought of her, how that comes through in that movie. It gives me a gross feeling watching that. It makes me really sad for her. I'm gonna stop rambling about Marilyn because I love her. <laughs> I love her but this is a makeup channel and I'm sure no one cares. Anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you have a nice day and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye! It's kind of like a so if you can hear the dog, he's like sticking his foot in his mouth for fun. He enjoys doing that. <laughs> You're noisy today, sweetie. You're being noisy. Aw, oh, Pip. And it's fragrance free. And the only me...